A new dawn has risen in the form of digital eco-friendly technology, signaling a new era for the construction industry. South Africa has launched its first ever 3D construction printing technology that's hoped to significantly dent the country's housing shortfall. For more on this, we're joined by the chairperson of the Sustainable Materials and Construction Center at the University of Johannesburg, Rari Mampeule. Thank you very, uh, um, very much for joining us this morning. I was actually joking off air uh, on the back of the water crisis that we have in parts of the country can you know can we print can we 3d print water obviously we can't um, but um, the innovation that you all have come up with a very important one uh, tell us a little bit about it and how long it was in the making morning Rubina and your, your your viewers thank you I know you're joking but soon we'll be printing water you never know with technology and innovation these days but we, we have been working the SMAC, which is the a center of the University of Johannesburg uh, School of Engineering, um, basically started to open the center to look at different innovative or innovation method of construction. So that in terms of saying, how do we, how can we accelerate delivery of affordable housing in South Africa? It was opened in 2021 and in 2022, uh, the Mampele Foundation was a patron of the center where we basically um, sponsored um, students who are uh, postgraduate PhD students to be able to study innovations. And in 2020, uh, late 2020, uh, 22, we received the first 3D machine that we partnered with the uh, Department of um, Science and Innovation. And that's what, is, that's, that's what we were launching yesterday. Tell us a little bit about uh, that launch. So we do have the visuals on screen for our viewers' benefit, but what exactly uh, does this machine do and the materials uh, that it prints these houses with? And then, of course, uh, the time frame in which these uh, homes are, are, are printed by the machine. So it's quite interesting. As you can see the visuals, basically what we have here is a machine, uh, what we call a 3D print machine, and we can print a house literally we call it, you can put an ink into the machine and print the house. And that ink is basically a concrete uh, cement material that is specialized that the, MP, uh, the MPA of the strand is actually quite um, higher than the normal one of a brick and mortar. And basically we, we, we are able to then print a house in a space of eight hours. I must also justify that there's definitely a situation where as indicated earlier on, our, our postgraduate students are still studying this machine. This machine is still in the laboratory with the university, with the academics, with the professors. We are still studying it further. But so far, the preliminary um, approach is that we can be able to print a house uh, or at least some walls in about eight hours. So we're going to obviously deliver a typical RTP house in a very, very much uh, faster pace slightly more affordable and more of a better quality than the current uh, uh, technology that we may be having out, out here in South Africa. Mm. Apart uh, from the template that has been built, uh, the full house that uh, was also shown at the launch yesterday, have there been any other homes uh, that have been built that you are using as pilot projects to see uh, how people are living in them or is this yet to happen? So that's still yet to happen. However, as you could see, yesterday we had partnership where basically we've partnered with the human set department of human settlement. We've also partnered with the FARGE, the Department of Science and, and Technology. And essentially, as, as the team, we are looking at different alternative alternative of saying, how do we then go and actually start implementing and building some of this unit? So we partnered with the Department of Human Settlement in KZN, where we are looking and saying, if we can be able to put few units as a trial. I mean, that's a province that is also just came from a, a, a floods that came uh, that happened last year. And we basically want to start and see if we can do something in that in that vicinity. However, as a continent and uh, in South Africa, I mean, Africa, there are 10 units that are obviously close to completion in Kenya that uh, our partners Lafarge have done. So you can scale up this type of developments. What we're looking for, we're looking obviously for the private sector to implement this thing so that we can scale it, where private sector can go out and buy more of these printing machines so that they can be able to deliver housing at a faster pace and with a faster quality.
Mm. We'll so, do the better quality right now. Yeah, so we've got uh, the efficiency in terms of time it takes to build and the quality, you say, is an improved one. But there must be a cost to this. You did say it's more affordable than the traditional bricks and mortar. But when we talk about the cost, tell us about the cost of the machine, uh, but also when you say the home is more affordable, uh, what exactly are you referring to there? Is it the materials as well? So basically, I mean, you know, how we are approaching this thing is the same way as uh, uh, Robina, the same way where we, in the olden days you'll have a landline and now you have a cell phone. So it doesn't mean that you cannot use your old landline, but you probably want to have a look and see if we can be able to use a cell phone because it might be convenient and quicker. And this is how we're seeing the whole 3D print. Now, the cell phone is slightly expensive to buy, but it's also giving you more opportunities for you to be able to do business mobile. I'm busy doing this interview with you with my mobile phone. So there are other things. The same thing with the jobs. You know, a lot of the next question that will probably come is to say, well, you know, technology and innovation is going to disturb people. We are, ha we are having a high rate of unemployment in the country. Yes, and that's true. But what we've seen here so far with our preliminary study as the institution and as the center is that there's actually, there might be some jobs that will be lost, but there will also be new jobs that are going to be able to be produced. We're going to make the construction industry to be more, even more attractive for women and youth, you know, because this is quite a, a technology that is really innovative and it can be able to attract new players in the, into the space. But also there's opportunities for us to look at it in a country point of view where we can do industrial um, uh, business opportunity to actually manufacture these 3Ds in the country. And therefore we are going to be able to employ more people. So we see it as the same way as how the telecommunication industry has transformed from a landline into cell phones. You know, so I think that's what we're looking at. I mean, this, this type of units cost a lot of money. I mean, um, you know, we, we've negotiated some good deals with the, with the manufacturers. I mean, this specific one has cost us about 6 million rand. Mm -hmm. And that is such an important part that you touch on there in terms of uh, creating the industry in South Africa or the manufacturing spaces in where we can make the machines ourselves. Uh, uh, currently, with uh, the machines that you do have, were those materials sourced outside of the country? And is there an existing opportunity for those very materials uh, to be available in the country to put the machines together? Romina, that's an amazing question, I must say. We have students, as I said, PhD students who are uh, uh, studying different discipline in the, in, the, in the space of innovation in, in construction and building space. And essentially, we've got some preliminary um, uh, material that we actually have that uh, students have been working on. As indicated earlier on, we have Lafarge Africa, Lafarge South Africa, that we're also working with them in terms of uh, transferring of skills to our students and sharing of ideas and say how we're going to manufacture that, that, that type of material in, in the country. Again, that is an opportunity, hence we said earlier on, that some jobs are going to be lost, but some jobs, there's going to, there's going to be some new job opportunities. So it's quite exciting that we're already having, uh, we're close to about 98% uh, uh, in terms of having a material that we can use that we don't have to export, uh, that we can be able to manufacture here in South Africa. Mm. And then just a final question. You did mention earlier that the quality of the units is much better uh, than that of bricks and water. Uh, but the safety living in the home, um, has that been tried and tested? And are you confident, especially if you want to trial this project in KZN, where there is extreme weather we saw last year, that these units could weather that particular extremity? I must say again, Romina, that it's very important to note that this is not uh, government. I'm not speaking on behalf of government, but as a center, our understanding is that government is not going to force people to use this 3D print. The people that are willing to want to have a new cell phone versus a, a, a landline will have a choice. And, and this is one of the options. And we are also studying for other innovative material that can also address issues in KZN in terms of innovative construction mm -hmm. methods. But at the same time, we are living in a country where we have regulators, uh, Rubina. I mean, we yesterday we had the, the CEO of the NHFC, uh, NHBFC. These are the people that actually study and check how the concrete quality is at. We've, we've had the CEO of Agrima SA that was at the launch as well. These are the guys that are going to look and say, well, you uh, uh, SMACT, which is our center at the University of Johannesburg, 
well, we think this is not possible for us to take it to our people. So South Africa can be rest assured that Agrima SA and NHBRC will go through and have a look and see if this is a good uh, one, one of the good uh, technologies that the country can be able to look at as an option for accelerating delivery of affordable housing in South Africa. Mm. Amazing innovation indeed, uh, and we really look forward to how it develops over the next uh, few months. Uh, that is the uh, chairperson of the Sustainable Materials and Construction Centre at the University of Johannesburg joining us this morning. Thank you very much uh, for your time uh, today. Very interesting insights indeed, and hopefully it does contribute positively to some of the housing crisis that we have in the country. And like you heard him say, you never know with the way technology advances answers constantly, we may be able to even print water one day.